Hey, good afternoon, folks. It's Steve Calf 5 JUF. Hope everyone's doing okay out there. I've been taking a little bit of a break. I uh, believe it or not, I actually caught that COVID mess, so that took me down for about a week or so. But uh, eventually, I got over it, and everything's back to normal. So it was kind of a more of an inconvenience more than anything. But anyway, uh, that stuff's real. I actually caught it, so what a mess. Anyway, um, I been playing around with some ideas about antennas and um, I wanted to go over today kind of some of my experiences with Comet. Uh, I have actually used uh, several Comet antennas, uh, the GP1 which is a, a base station, the GP3 is also a base station and I've also have one that I'm using it's a uh, Charlie Alpha 2 X-Ray 4 SR and there's two versions. There's an M M O, and then there's a non uh, N M O. And I'll go over what those are. But I just want to share with you what my uh, antenna experience is, because if you, you know if you're new out there and you're looking for a pretty good quality antenna, uh, I think Comet's a, a a good way to go. So basically, <laughs> what we'll do is I want to go over the uh, GP1, the GP3, and then I want to go over the mobiles. And then I've got some pictures of my mobile installation and my base installation. And also, if anyone out there has been uh, watching any of my recent videos, i uh, kind of been going around and around with uh, Diamond on a CP610 uh, issue with 6 meter not being resident. And um, I kind of want to give everybody an update on that because uh, there's not much there's not much of an update. So anyway, well, let's jump into it. Uh, the GP one in the GP3. Uh, the price range is about uh, the GP1 is about eighty dollars, and the GP3 is about a hundred and five. Uh, these are from DX Engineering. Um, there's your part numbers. Uh, also, uh, just a quick: uh, uh, the GP1 is a good performance SWR, easy to install, and basically it works right out of the box. You don't have to do anything to it, so it's really, really quick and easy. GP3 has a slightly better uh, distance performance than a GP1, but also with very good SWR. And again, it's easy to install and uh, right, it works right out of the box. Uh, these things are, you know, they give plug and play a whole new meeting. Here's a little some of the specifications on it. Uh, 200 watts. Uh, basically, they're an SO239 UHF female is the connection. GP3, the same power wattage. Um, the difference is uh, this one's 4.2 feet tall and the GP3 is 5.9 feet tall. However, the mounting base and everything is identical between the two, two antennas. Here they are side by side. The uh, DBI gain uh, for the GP1 is uh, about 3 dBi isotropic on 2 meters and then 6 on 70. Uh, the GP3 is about 4.5 dBi and 7.2 dBi, so you get a little bit better gain on the GP3. I couldn't tell a whole lot of difference, but the GP3 does have a little bit more of a reach, and uh, I think here's a little has a little bit better ears on it. There's the main difference, 4.2 4 feet and 5.9 feet. All these are pretty much the same specs here, 200 watts, SO239. Mobiles. So one thing I want to share with you on mobiles, what I learned is uh, you're going to come up and you're going to see two types of common mobile antenna configurations. One of them is called a Nancy Mike Oscar, which is which actually stands for uh, 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 Motorola, new Motorola mounts, what that stands for. But what I want to show you is uh, you've got to be careful when ordering the part numbers. And these are good Comet part numbers. One of them is this guy right here. This is a, an NM, NMO, which you see right here, which just stands for new Motorola mount, which is what I looked it up. That's what Google told me. And then you have your standard UHF connection. So if you order an antenna, you got to make sure you order the base plate and the antenna for either in Nancy Mike Oscar or without the Nancy Mike Oscar. So this is what I bought. Uh, this is the base mount I have. It's uh, the NMO, which is the new Motorola mount. And you can see that's the antenna I bought. 
it's the uh, and the DBI gain on this is about 3.8 uh, two meters and 6.2 on uh, UHF. Again, very good. Uh, has about 18 feet of coax, uh, RG58 coax, I should say, and uh, has an SO239 connector on it that you'll connect right to the back of your radio. $32 for the base, uh, about $69. So for maybe right or just over $100, you can you know get a get a pretty uh, pretty decent uh, pretty decent thing a pretty decent uh, setup for your mobile. These are some of the specifications on it here. Uh, again, five star on this one all the way. This is the this is the non NMO, which is just a UHF, what they call a female UHF connection. So the uh, one that has the NMO has NMO in the part numbers right here, here, and here. But if you order the UHF, they do not have the NMO. So make sure you order the right base plate with the right antenna. And these all these are all good DX engineering part numbers too. So if you want to use these, you can. Same ideal here. It's 40 inches tall as a height on it. So my mobile installation, this is one of the really, one of the selling features I really liked about this common antenna was the fact it has these little rubber feet right here, this little rubber pad, and it has the magnet is covered by this protective film here. So what happens is this rubber actually presses against your mo your vehicle, surface of your vehicle, and the magnet pulls that rubber down, but the magnet never act, this surface right here, this never comes in contact with your paint. So from a protection standpoint, this is really a good design because it keeps the water from getting up underneath here, and it also protects your paint. And that's the way I've got mine mounted in the Portion, rear portion of my van. So mine is temporary. I have a garage, so I have to take mine down uh, during the week or whatever. Uh, this is the way I ran my coax. It's 2016 Dodge Caravan, and and this is very very easy to do. There's plenty of uh, uh, there's not too much tension in here, and it's just uh, just one way I do it. There's the actual radio, the FT, uh, FTD FTD or FTM300D, and here's my uh, power connection. I've got 14 gauge wire going out to the battery, and then I've got a uh, 25 amp fuse on it. This is the rear of the radio. This is the actual connector here. Uh, the installation on my base station where I did my GP3s, uh, uh, a lot of people have asked question where I came up with all this hardware to side mount the GP3. And I've got a video here that I actually cover this entire section. So if you're curious and you want to mount your DP GP3 next to one of your poles, I've got a video here and I'll put it in the body of this video. You can go back and you, it's got all the hardware, it tells you where to go buy everything. And uh, basically, I give you the recipe of how I built my station. So it kind of gives you something to, you know, look at. So on the CP610, essentially, uh, my plan was to incorporate the, the uh, CP610 antenna and set up a Yagi 2 meter. Uh, but that didn't work out. This is what I originally had before was a Serio 1011, and then I had the Aero GP. And this this is a good little antenna. It, it works fine. So right now, as of today, I really don't have 6 meter on the Diamond uh, CP610, but uh, I have 10 meter, and I'm very happy with it. So for that reason, I'm just going to leave it alone right now. I'm not going to do anything to it. 10 meters, the bands are opening. 6 meters has been open, been making contacts all day. So I'm just going to stick with the CP610, and I'm going to use it specifically for 10 meters. And then I'm going to use the Aero GP52 on my second pole for the uh, for 6 meter. So as far as diamond goes, initially there was a, there was an attempt uh, to replace the feed point assembly. This did not solve the problem with six meter not being resident. Several attempts were made to contact diamond by phone and email, no success. So essentially, you know, in my mind, and 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 if diamond comes back and says, hey, we 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 we've have haven't had phone service or our email has been down for three weeks, then I'll go back and tear this video down and redo it. But at this point. Uh, Diamond has not called me back. They have not emailed me. Um, 
you know, my conclusion is, uh, you know, the 610 uh, for $300 I spent, if I had it to do over again, I would actually go down the road and start looking at maybe building my own antenna or looking at some antennas, maybe by uh, Polymer or Buckskin or a couple of uh, dipole options. Um, the concern I have, I have something kind of unique, is I have a metal roof, so I don't know if that's could be a problem for dipoles, and I'm, I have a suspicion talking to a couple of guys, uh, the, the metal roof could be a problem, but, uh, you know, if you don't have a metal roof, you've got a normal house with, you know, trees and stuff, you could probably throw a dipole up and probably get 40, 20, 17, 15, and 10, maybe even 6, but I have a unique situation with the metal roof, so I'm just going to, uh, at this point, um, more research, more work. So anyway, that's the video. I just kind of wanted to uh, share with you my experience with Comet. Comet's a great antenna. I hope, you know, if you're looking for something easy to install and works right out of the box, it's a really good option. So again, hope you enjoy the video. And thanks again, 73 from Steve Cal 5 juf And uh, y'all have a great week and uh, enjoy the hobby. And again, 10 meter, at least for me, 10 meter has been wide open and six meter has been two uh, pretty much from all the way from San Diego, all the way to Miami. So, okay guys, 73 and I appreciate you watching and uh, thanks again.